Hi everyone, Big, Big Thinny Smile Tano here, here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for our monthly Great album segment where I go over records uh, that for me personally were highlights uh, over the course of the month. April is out, May is in, so uh, you know, let's, uh, let's mention those records that I thought over the past 30 days were something special. One, gotta give a shout out to the new Joey Badass album, American Badass. Uh, my favorite project Joey has released thus far, a really interesting record in my opinion, where he tries to take on a lot of big, huge, just big ticket political issues. And uh, while he doesn't come to any sort of big solutions or uh, uh, closure on any of these issues, I think it's really more about kind of the, the struggle or wrestle uh, that he's having kind of working through these problems. I don't get how people were kind of ripping this album apart, uh, calling it generic and saying that, oh, Joey's just talking a bunch of random bullshit politically that we've heard a million times before, or, you know, I, I wish he just went harder all over the album. Um, you know, Joey, in my opinion, has always been a very dynamic artist, an artist who is kind of all over the map emotionally. Uh, he has quite a bit of low-key songs uh, in his canon, uh, especially on, like, the Summer Nights mixtape. Uh, so to kind of hear this side, this introspective, uh, very thoughtful, very political side of Joey on this album wasn't really anything all that new to me. And even though there may be a lot of instrumentals on this thing that are really smooth, really jazzy, uh, there are actually quite a few moments where vocally and lyrically Joey is really passionate and really aggressive. I actually like the fact that the beats kind of take a little bit of a step back because it makes his performances seem that much more significant. Uh, but you know, that's just my take on the record. Uh, moving on from there, I want to give a shout out to the new Father John Misty album, Pure Comedy. Love this album. Oh gosh, I love it. Oh gosh, I love it so good. Oh boy. Oh boy, I love it. This is one of my favorite singer-songwriter records in a while. Um, and I've heard so many good singer-songwriter records this year, between this and the new Mount Erie album and uh, the new uh, Sun Kill Moon album, but this is really just like taking the cake for me. Um, I love Josh Tillman's sense of humor on this record. I love the way that he highlights issues and problems uh, uh, with the human condition on this album. I find the, ba the ballads beautiful on this record. Um, and uh, I don't know what else to say, man. I mean, it is a long record. Uh, I don't think Josh really kind of beats the audience over their heads with his sense of humor. You really got to kind of read into what he's saying to get the joke. Uh, but I love the way that his comedy is juxtaposed against, you know, these very uh, beautiful and sometimes very sad, dreary songs and uh, realizations. Um, you know, th this album very much kind of has the attitude toward the very dark and disgusting world that we live in that I do, uh, I can't help but laugh at some of the insanity that the world presents to me every day. Um, so, you know, and I don't know, I, I can't do anything else about it other than laugh. So, you know, this record kind of indulges me in that feeling, I guess, which is maybe why I'm connecting so much with it personally. Um, a lot of people, you know, I, I understand that this album is not, is not destined for the top of the Billboard charts, but, uh, you know, I think if you just kind of reframe the way you're looking at this record a little bit and just kind of see that, you know, it's it's not that serious of an album. It is titled Pure Comedy for a reason. Um, you know, you might get a little more out of it. Uh, moving on from there, I want to give a shout out to the new Abibio Sound Machine album. Ooh, yay! God, oh, this this is everything I wanted out of an Abibio Sound Machine record. Out of all the records that I loved over the past 30 days, this this one did not get as many views as I wanted, so I know there are probably some people going in this video like, who who the hell's Abibio Sound Machine? Abibio Sound Machine, this great band from the UK who are melding elements of electronic music and dance music and pop music, synth pop, disco, um, and Afrobeat all together at once. And it's just an amazing funky, physical mix of all these ideas, and they just come together so well on this record. Of course, you know, groups in the past, groups who they seem to take direct influence from have have sort of made these combinations before, you know, Talking Heads, for example, uh, I think is probably the biggest uh, standout comparison there. Uh, but they really take it a step further, uh, not only with uh, a lot of the 
uh, rhythms and tunes and especially the lyrics um, being of African origin. Uh, but I think, you know, sort of being a newer band, they're kind of able to have a bigger sort of bird's eye view of all these different sounds and all these different styles and sort of meld them together in sort of new uh, creative ways. Uh, you know, there are moments on this thing where it sounds like uh, they're, they're pulling a little bit more from post-punk, moments where it seems like they're pulling a little bit more from synth pop, uh, moments where it seems like uh, they're pulling a little bit more from disco. It's a really great record. It's a really fun, captivating, colorful, vivid listen. Uh, and if, you know, you just want to get up out of your chair and just... This is the fucking album to do it to. I apologize. Um, I'm just passionate about that record, that's all. Moving on from there, I want to give a shout out to the new Kendrick Lamar album, Damn! Damn! Uh, I really like this record. I do like it. It is one of the bigger and more standout records for me of this month. Um, I mean, I get it. I don't think it's one of the best albums he's ever put out. Uh, some people seem to take take umbrage with that and that's fine um you know you can be mad at me over that i, I it's not going to make me like or dislike the album anymore any less or whatever um i still kind of feel the same way i do about the record um though i do think i, I may revisit the album uh this coming this month at some point uh sort of in a podcast doing sort of post Kendrick Lamar autopsy uh, for this record, which I think might make for an interesting discussion. Sort of give the album a, a month, let the dust settle a little bit, and sort of have a final word on uh, not just the album itself, but kind of the aftermath and the impact of it um, the, once it hit. So, you know, that should be pretty cool. Uh, but moving on from there, uh, finally, I want to give a shout out to an album that it took, it took me a while to sort of get through to finally review it because it is a long record. It's two and a half hours long. And that is the new Magnetic Fields album, 50 Song Memoir, uh, which was a pretty entertaining record for me. Given that it is 50 songs, there are a lot of duds on this thing. Uh, but Stephen Merritt does come through with a fun and very entertaining set of tracks. Uh, it's just at, at the very tail end of the project, I think uh, the the... <laughs> the the album starts dishing out its worst songs, and I think only to maybe the halfway point does the record feel even somewhat autobiographical. Uh, but for the songs on this record that do kind of fit that memoir archetype, um, you know, I really love what Stephen Merritt sort of has to say about uh, his youth, um, also his, his days in his teens and his 20s, uh, his infatuation with music and, and various uh, sort of music-related pieces, uh, music-related things like instruments or culture uh, on the second disc of the album. Uh, there are a lot of great things about this record. Uh, it's not a perfect album, and I don't even think it executes its, you know, uh, its, its uh, concept as stated in the title uh, as well as it possibly could have. But I do think, um, you know, it, it is one of the better albums the Magnetic Fields have, have released in a while. Uh, I'll say that. Um, and I don't think it's uh, necessarily the worst introduction for people who are new to the band, though if you have not heard of Magnetic Fields before, please, uh, 69 Love Songs, um, and, uh, uh, you know, check out the stuff that they released uh, even before that. Uh, but there you go. Those are my thoughts and those are my recommendations for this month. I hope you guys had a good month and heard a lot of good records, and um, you're the best. I'll see you in the next video. Tran. Zition. Thanks for watching this video. Other videos next to my head that I think you should check out. Subscribe to the channel. Official website too. Yeah. Eat your fruits and veggies. Stay hydrated. And stop wearing tie-dye hoodies. Forever.